Hey, we are back today with another video. Today we have a software update on our Model 3 Standard Range Plus from 2019. It is software version 2020.48.35.5. And yes, we have a bunch of update videos and that's because Tesla just keeps providing updates to the software, which is awesome. It's always great to check out the new software and see what they've got. So let's check it out. Hey, David here from What Drives You. And real quick, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. We're working really hard on getting to a thousand subscribers and I could really use your help. So let's get back to it. As mentioned, it was software version 2020.48.35.5. And it doesn't look like we have any new uh, updates here other than what has already been released in the previous updates of 2020.48. So, we do again have the release notes improvements, which basically just looks nicer. This whole menu, the release notes menu. We have the new games, Battle Palatopia, Cat Quest, Solitaire, driving visualizations improvements. So again, this just expands this side of the screen so that more driving visualizations are showing while you're driving some people like it some people don't like it i personally like it i like to see what the car sees around me and having more room for that on the screen is great i also think it helps for the videos uh but you know that's just a personal preference i do think it would be nice if in the future they had the ability to change the size of the driving visualizations based on your preference so say if you didn't have it in autopilot maybe you could just have it as a small display that only had your speed and you know which gear you're in and that sort of thing just the essentials and then if you put it in an autopilot maybe it expands to a larger portion of the screen to show you the cars around your car and what the car sees and is doing with the lanes and all that but for now i do like the fact that it's bigger and it looks nicer on this display so to me that's a plus <clears throat> we do have the scheduled departure improvements of course just like we had before Again, this just gives you a little bit more flexibility in scheduling a departure and whether it warms up the battery in the cabin, whether it's plugged in or not. So that is nice to do a little bit more, uh, more flexibility to the scheduled departure. And again, we have the supercharger display improvements where you can see how many uh, supercharger stalls are available really quickly by just looking at the number in the dot over the location for that supercharger. So that is again, a nice visuals, visualization or display improvement that kind of makes it easier to see whether you're gonna be able to, you know, have a supercharging um, availability at that time or not. So definitely an easy way to see that. Uh, vehicle information, again, they got rid of the T logo at the top, no big deal because um, all that information is now in the menu down below. So you have the entertainment and all that, toy box and all that sort of things. Get you to the software and you can see previous release notes. So that does it for the release notes. These are, like I said, the same release notes that we had for 2020.48. Now I can't even remember which it was, 20, 30, I don't know. Can't remember what the last uh, software update we got was, but it was the same release notes, no difference there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do a test drive of this new software update in the Model 3 and see if it does any difference, uh, does have any differences in the autopilot functionality. I would like to see if it dips into any of the turn lanes. That is still my biggest pet peeve about autopilot on the side streets, is it dipping into the turn lanes actually I also dislike the fact that it does that on the interstate. So um, definitely gonna be worth trying uh, on the interstate to see if I actually get it dipping into the on-ramps uh, as well on autopilot. That is one of the things that they really need to fix in my opinion. So we're gonna go and check that out. So I handled that stop nicely. Of course we do not have FSD beta, so it does not actually do any turns on the side streets here. It literally just stops at intersections and will proceed if you tap on the accelerator or confirm on the stock. So nothing new there. 
I would like to see how it stops here at this stop sign. Often it stops too early and it's sort of abrupt. And surprise, surprise, the exact same behavior as previous updates. It stops abruptly and a little bit too soon in my opinion. Not too bad though. I'm just kind of used to it. And again, without it being able to do the auto steer within the neighborhood, it's actually not that big a deal to me because I don't actually like to use the autopilot uh, in the neighborhood. Once it has auto steer within the neighborhood, that's definitely gonna be something that I like to use more often. I'm gonna use it every opportunity I get, just like I do on the side streets or the city streets. I do like to use autopilot every opportunity I get. <laughs> turn here go down this road and then probably come back same way there is a turn lane that it has in the past tended to dip into on this stretch of road so we're gonna get there and see if it does anything different so in most recent updates it has been doing quite well with this intersection up here it just goes straight through it especially if we have a lead car hasn't had any trouble with it so let's just see how it does today oh, so we actually lost our lead car so I have to confirm to go through and even without the lead car went right through that intersection no problem did very well with that so I do like it seems like it's improving on intersections there have been a lot of intersections where it would get confused as it goes across the intersection there's definitely one up here that it almost always goes to the wrong lane when trying to cross that intersection. So we will test that out coming up. This one it always does fine with. So we'll check out the one up here in just a minute. And first we do have a turn lane that it will always, at least in all previous updates, it has dipped into the turn lane and kind of swerved back and forth. So we'll see. Oh. That's yellow light. That, that was good. So <clears throat> it went through that yellow light. That was good timing on there. I almost, I, I almost would have broke, you know, braked for that one, but I don't know. All right, so here we go. This is where the turn lane usually will dip to the right and then the left. That still did. So see the car just kind of swerves back and forth. It seems like it's getting less and less violent about that move. You know, it's just calmly going to the right and then to the left but that is still the wrong behavior it is still obvious that the lane should continue going and it should stay in the middle of the lane i don't understand why it has a tendency to move into turn lanes so not really any update there it might have been a little less than normal it's hard to tell uh, but it still did exhibit that behavior now this right here even with a lead car I have never seen it appropriately go across this intersection. So once this car goes across and we get to follow it, um, we will see if it stays in the lane, but in every previous attempt, it has always failed and gone over to the right to essentially get into the incorrect lane. So it just changes lanes across the intersection. So let's see how it does today with software version 2020.48.35.5 and by the way still 2020 updates come on let's get a 2021 update that's what i'm excited for and the rest of version 11 that would be fantastic all right here we go across the intersection and yep so i did it again it goes straight for the wrong lane and have to take control immediately it even actually gives you a little warning that it basically doesn't know what it's doing but it still tries to do that it still tries to go across the intersection it just picks the wrong lane i don't know why it does that so it has been able to go through this intersection in the past it is I'm not really sure what they call it is it the reverse diamond i'm not sure but it's basically where the lanes cross from one side over to the other side. So it is sort of a challenging intersection for the car to go across in autopilot. So let's see if it actually, with a lead car, does well going across the intersection. It usually, in my mind, goes a little too fast. It should slow down for that. And 
Uh, usually just kind of takes it a little bit too quickly, but let's see how it does through this intersection. For some reason it was on hold and I did have to hit the accelerator there to get it going, even though we had a lead car, so that was a little odd. All right, so it handles that pretty well. It got a little bit too close to the left side of the lane there, in my opinion, but not too bad. It didn't seem like the other people mind, mind it much. All right, so this one is the one where it gets kind of crazy. Again, it gets a little too far to the left side of that lane, but it stays in it and it holds it through the rest of the intersection. So that was actually pretty good. And it took it at a, a nice comfortable speed, possibly just because we had a lead car. <laughs> With that lead car, it didn't have any trouble uh, keeping the right pace. So not sure if there's any improvement there, but it does handle that intersection without me having to do any inter intervention on that at all. So that is good. Now up here, we do have a school zone sign and light. The lights are above the road and in past updates it has slowed down for those inactive lights. Here it is. Yep, it sees the light and it slows down, which is incorrect because it is inactive. The light is inactive so it should not slow down. Now, if it was active, then it should have slowed down to 25 miles per hour because it's school zone. But when it's not active, it should completely disregard that light. And it still looks at that light above the intersection or above the lane that you're in. And it just slows down, like sort of like acting like it's a caution sign. Um, but again, it's, it's not active. So it shouldn't have any response to it whatsoever. All right, so there it is. Software version 2020.48.35.5. As far as I could tell, Basically, nothing different in this update that is okay. We definitely got, well, I'm sure the Tesla made some uh, software bug fixes and that sort of thing. So definitely good to have those things uh, going on. And, you know, Tesla hasn't forgotten about us. They are continuing to improve their software every chance they get. So, but I didn't see anything that at least directly impacted me or how the car drove. So that was... Uh, Unfortunate, you know, I always like to see new things that uh, new improvements that they do But right now basically just the same old same old on that update. I'm really excited about them getting FSD beta out to a wide release. I can't wait for them to do that So I really hope that they can do that pretty soon Also version 11 of the software if nothing else that should be coming out pretty soon as well at this point It is almost a month late. They did kind of half of the release for Christmas when they uh usually send out that big software update but they didn't actually do all of it and they have not called it version 11 yet so definitely i expect that there's going to be a lot more things coming in version 11 when it does come out so i'm looking forward to that so as always thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one